Twelver Arabic, Athna Shrite translate. Athna Asheriya or Ithna Asheriya, Persian, Shai Dwazdamami pronounced i.e. Jadivzdaya Emi or Amamiya Arabic, Amamite is the largest branch of Shia Islam. The term Twelver refers to its adherents' belief in twelve divinely ordained leaders, known as the Twelve Imams, and their belief that the last Imam, Muhammad al-Mahdi, lives in occultation and will reappear as the promised Mahdi. According to Shia tradition, the Mahdi's tenure will coincide with the second coming of Jesus Christ Isa, who is to assist the Mahdi against the Masih ad-Dajjal literally, the false messiah, or antichrist. Twelvers believe that the Twelve Imams are the spiritual and political successors to the Islamic prophet Muhammad. According to the theology of Twelvers, the Twelve Imams are exemplary human individuals who not only rule over the community with justice, but are also able to preserve and interpret sharia and the esoteric meaning of the Quran. The words and deeds sunnah of Muhammad and the Imams are a guide and model for the community to follow. As a result, Muhammad and the Imams must be free from error and sin, a doctrine known as isma or infallibility, and must be chosen by divine decree, or nas, through Muhammad. Twelver Shiism is the largest branch of Shia Islam, with about 85% of all Shias, or approximately 150 to 300 million Twelver Shias. Twelvers make majorities among Muslims in Iran, Azerbaijan, Iraq, Lebanon, Bahrain. Also, they make significant minorities in India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Bangladesh, Kuwait, Oman, UAE, Qatar, Nigeria, Chad, and Tanzania. Iran is the only country with state religion as Twelver Shia Islam. Twelvers share many tenets of Shia with related sects, such as the belief in Imams, but the Ismaili Shias believe in a different number of Imams and, for the most part, a different path of succession regarding the Imamate. They also differ in the role and overall definition of an imam. Twelvers are also distinguished from Ismailis by their belief in Muhammad's status as the seal of the prophets, Qatam and Nabiyan, in rejecting the possibility of abrogation of Sharia laws, and in considering both esoteric and exoteric aspects of the Quran. Alevis in Turkey and Albania, and Alawites in Syria and Lebanon, share belief in the twelve imams with Twelvers, but their theological doctrines are markedly different. Terminology The term Twelver is based on the belief that twelve male descendants from the family of Muhammad, starting with Ali ibn Abi Talib and ending with Muhammad al Mahdi, are Imams who have religious and political authority. The Twelvers are also known by other names. The Shia, or Shia is commonly used as a synonym for Twelvers, since this branch comprises the majority group in Shia Islam. Shia refers to a group of Muslims who believe that the succession to Muhammad must remain in his family for specific members who are designated by a divine appointment. Tabataba'i states that the word referred to the partisans of Ali at the time of Muhammad himself. Jafari refers exclusively to the Twelver juridical school which is followed by the majority of Shias. It also refers to the minority Akbaris who advocate a distinct juridical approach within Jafari jurisprudence. The term is derived from the name of Jafar al-Sadiq who is considered by the Twelvers to be their sixth Imam. Jafar al-Sadiq is also respected and referenced by the founders of the Sunni Hanafi and Maliki schools of jurisprudence. Imami or Imamiya or Imamite is a reference to the Twelver belief in the infallibility of the Imams. Although the Ismilis also share the generic concept of Imams, this term is exclusively used for the Twelvers who believe that the leadership of the community after Muhammad belongs to Ali and eleven subsequent successors that together comprise the fourteen infallibles. Theological doctrine Twelver theology, which mainly consists of five principles, has formed over the course of history on the basis of the teachings of Quran, and hadiths from Muhammad and the Twelve Imams especially Jafar al-Sadiq, and in response to the intellectual movements in the Muslim world and major events of the Twelver history, such as the Battle of Karbala and the occultation of the Twelfth Imam, Muhammad al-Mahdi, it should be noted that mystics, philosophers, and traditional scholars all have diverse opinions about the unity of God, free will, and judgment day, as stated by Jafar Sidon. Care has been taken to mention the tradition view first then mention other views objectively. <inaudible> <inaudible> Unity of God 
According to Hossein Nasser, Ali ibn Abi Talib, the first Shia imam is credited with having established Islamic theology and among Muslims his sermons contain the first rational proofs of the God's unity Tawhid. Ali is quoted as arguing that unity of God means that he has no like, he is not subject to numeration and is not divisible either in reality or imagination. On another occasion, he is quoted saying, The first step of religion is to accept, understand and realize him as the Lord. The correct form of belief in his unity is to realize that he is so absolutely pure and above nature that nothing can be added to or subtracted from his being. That is, one should realize that there is no difference between his person and his attributes, and his attributes should not be differentiated or distinguished from his person. Traditional Twelvers strictly believe that God is different from his creation, and that both are separate entities however, Sayyid Haydar Amuli a prominent Shia mystic and philosopher defines God as alone in being, along with his names, his attributes, his actions, his theophanies. The totality of being therefore is he, through him, comes from him, and returns to him. God is not a being next to or above other beings, his creatures, he is being, the absolute act of being the divine unitude does not have the meaning of an arithmetical unity, among, next to, or above other unities. For, if there were being other than he, i.e., creatural being, God would no longer be the unique, i.e., the only one to be. As this divine essence is infinite, his qualities are the same as his essence, essentially there is one reality which is one and indivisible. According to Twelver's theology, Tawhid consists of several aspects including Tawhid of the essence, the attributes, the creatorship, the lordship and oneness in worship. Topic. Tawhid of the Essence Tawhid of the Essence of God means His Essence is one and peerless. Regarding this, Quran 112 states, say, He is Allah, who is one, Allah, the eternal refuge. He neither begets nor is born, nor is there to Him any equivalent. Quote. Topic. Tawhid of the Attributes Tawhid of the attributes means God's attributes have no other reality than his essence. Ali argues that, "...every attribute testifies to its being other than the object to which it is attributed, and every such object in turn testifies to its being other than the attribute." Quote, Tawhid of the attributes means to deny the existence of any sort of multiplicity and combination in the essence itself. A differentiation between the essence and the attributes or between the attributes implies a limitation in being. Traditional Twelvers believe that God's names are created by Him and are not His attributes. A name is a combination of created letters while attributes are what is implied by that name. It is stated in Al-Kafi that whoever worships God's names has committed disbelief in God as they are not Him. Topic. Tawhid of creatorship. Al-Hur al-Amali states that God created everything except humans' actions. According to some Twelvers, Tawhid of creatorship means that there is no creator but God, that is the causes and effects of the universe are not independent from God just as the beings which are not independent in essence. There is no power except God, according to Motahari. Tawhid of lordship Tawhid of lordship means the governance of the world and that human beings only belong to God. This oneness of lordship has two aspects, creative governance and religious governance at last oneness in worship, i.e., God alone is deserved to be worshipped. According to Mortiza Motahari, oneness in worship means rejecting all kinds of counterfeit worship, such as worship of carnal desires, money or prestige, and as Quran says, every act of obedience to an order is worship. Topic. Shirk Contrary to Tawhid is shirk. It is a belief that the world has more than one principle or pole. According to the mystic and philosopher Mortiza Motahari, the distinction of theoretical Tawhid from shirk is recognition of the idea that every reality and being in its essence, attributes and action are from him from him -ness Arabic. Until every supernatural action of the prophets is by God's permission as Quran points to it. Shirk in practice is to assume something as an end in itself, independent from God, but to assume it as a path to God to him -ness Arabic, anyalai as Tawhid. The justice of God 
Ali insists that God is just and he is the justice itself and the virtue of justice flows from him to the souls of men. Since he is justice, everything he does is just. Shi'ism considers justice as innate to divine nature, i.e., God can not act unjustly, because it is his nature to be just. Topic. Justice in creation Twelvers believe that God grants every existent what is appropriate for it as the verse 2050 states, Our Lord is he who gave unto everything its nature, then guided it aright. Topic. Justice in religious dispensation God guides each human through sending messengers and he does not impose upon them obligations that are beyond their capacity. Topic. Justice in recompense Tabatabai states that the justice of God necessitates that the virtuous and evil people become separated, the virtuous have a good life and the evil have a wretched life. He will judge the beliefs and the deeds of all the people according to the truth and he will give every one his right due. Then the reality of everything as it is will be revealed for the man. Through his faith and good deeds, he can get to friendship with God. The form of man's deeds are joined to his soul and accompany him which are the capital of his future life. The verse 96-8 refers to getting back to God. Topic. Predestination and free will According to Twelver's narrations, God does not create humans' actions and instead they are fully created by humans. According to a narration by Musa al-Qadim, if God created humans' actions then he should not punish humans for it. Jafar al-Subhani argues that the justice of God requires that humans' actions cannot be created by God, otherwise God would be a doer of evil actions. Predestination is rejected in Shi'ism, however, some philosophers believe that all the existence is his creation including a human being and his actions. But actions have two dimensions. The first is committing the action by free will, the second is the creation of that action by God's will with which he gave the people the power to commit the action. Sadr al-Din Shirazi states that, God, may he be exalted, is far removed from doing any evil deeds and goes about his kingdom at will. Quote, the view that God creates humans' actions is rejected by traditional Twelvers. Topic. The prophethood Jafar al-Sadiq narrates from his fathers that Muhammad, in one of his sermons expressed that, God sent to people messengers so they might be his conclusive argument against his creatures and so his messengers to them might be witnesses against them. He sent among them prophets bearing good tidings and warning." Tabatabai states that God has perfected the guidance of people through sending the prophets. When the doctrines and practices of the revealed law gets to its perfection, the prophecy comes to an end, too. That is why the Quran points out that Islam is the last and the most perfect religion and Muhammad is the seal of the prophets. He adds. Al-Hili states that. The prophets are greater in merit than the angels, because the prophets have conflicts with rational power and they compel it to submit to reason." Quote. Topic. Angel Belief in the existence of the angels is one of the articles of Iman. Unseen beings of a luminous and spiritual substance, angels act as intermediaries between God and the visible world. Also superior in substance, angels are inferior to mankind, because man can reflect the image of God. The verse 234 implies the superiority of the mankind. God revealed the Quran to Muhammad by Gabriel who was also his guide on Miraj. The angels record the deeds of men. They follow the commands of God and do not precede him 2127. Is al-Din Kashani discusses that the angels are different in degree and station. Some of them cling to the threshold of perfection, others manage the affairs of the creation. al Khazwini, on the base of Quran and Hadith, names them as the bearers of the throne, the spirit, he governs all the affairs of the earth and heaven according to the principle of creation, Israfil, he places the spirits in the bodies and will blow the trumpet on the last day. Gabriel, who took the revelation to Muhammad. Michael, Azrael, the angel of death. The cherubim, al Karubian, who just praise God. The angels of seven heavens and the guardian angels, two of them are concerned with men. The attendant angels, they bring blessings upon human. Munker and Nakir who question the dead in the grave. 
The Jurniers, Harut and Marut are also among them. Revelation Tabatabai expresses that according to the thesis of general guidance, as the human reason cannot perceive the perfect law of happiness and he could not get it through the process of creation, there should be a general awareness of this law and it could be within the reach of every one. He adds there must be people who apprehend the real duties of life and bring them within the reach of human being. Tabatabai refers to this power of perception, which is other than the reason and the sense, as the prophetic consciousness or the consciousness of revelation as the verse 4 to 163 points to this perception namely revelation. Tabatabai describes that the reception of revelation, its preservation and its propagation are three principles of ontological guidance. What the prophets got through the revelation was religion which consists of doctrine and practice or method. He further adds that with passing of the time and gradual development of the society, the gradual development in the revealed law is apparent. By three ways the speech of God reaches to man, by revelation or divine inspiration, behind a veil, man can hear God's speech but can not hear him, or by a messenger, an angel conveys the inspiration to the man. By the verses 72-26-28 two types of guardians protect the integrity of the revelation, an angel who protects the prophet against any kind of error, God who protects the angels and the prophets. <laughs> miracle Tabatabai defines the miracle as a supernatural event which is shown by the prophet and the friends of God as a challenge to prove the claim of the prophethood and it is by God's permission. He states that the miracle should be according to the demands of the people of his own time. He adds that miracle has an inseparable connection with the claim of the prophethood and it is beyond the intellect and thinking. By miracle, al-hili means, "...the bringing into existence of something which is abnormal or the removal of something which normally exists, in a way which breaks through normality and which conforms to the claim of prophethood which is made." Quote, Savani regards some differences between miracles and extraordinary acts. He notes that miracles are not teachable and they are done without any prior training. As they are derived from the infinite power of God, the miracles are indisputable. The miracles are of unlimited types. The miracles are often concerned with spiritual matters rather worldly matters. <laughs> Imama and Walaya Shia believe in the trilateral structure of authority, authority of God which is absolute and universal as the verse 326 implies, authority of Muhammad which is legitimized by the grace of God as the verse 7-158 points to it and the authority of the Imams who are blessed for the leadership of the community through Muhammad as the verses 5-67 and 5-3 verifies according to Shia fundamental belief. According to Shia, Imama is the continuation of the prophetic mission. Shia believe in the twelve Imams who are divinely inspired descendants of Muhammad. They must meet these attributes, Nas designation by the previous Imam, Isma infallibility, ILM divine knowledge, Walaya spiritual guidance. The twelve Imams are the spiritual and political successors to Muhammad, based on Twelver's belief. It is believed in Shia Islam that AQL, a divine wisdom, was the source of the souls of the prophets and imams and gave them esoteric knowledge, called hikmah, and that their sufferings were a means of divine grace to their devotees. Although the imam was not the recipient of a divine revelation, but has close relationship with God, through which God guides him, and the imam in turn guides the people. The imamate, or belief in the divine guide is a fundamental belief in Shi'i Islam and is based on the concept that God would not leave humanity without access to divine guidance. According to Twelvers, there is always an imam of the age, who is the divinely appointed authority on all matters of faith and law in the Muslim community. Ali was the first imam of this line, and in the Twelvers' view, the rightful successor to Muhammad, followed by male descendants of Muhammad also known as Hasnain through his daughter Fatima. Each imam was the son of the previous imam, with the exception of Husayn ibn Ali, who was the brother of Hassan ibn Ali. The twelfth and final imam is Muhammad al-Mahdi, who is believed by the Twelvers to be currently alive, and in hiding. The Shia imams are seen as infallible. It is an important aspect of Shia theology that they are not prophets nabi, nor messengers rasul, but instead carry out Muhammad's message. The succession to Muhammad 
Shia believe that with the death of Muhammad, his religious and political authority were inherited to the Imams. Shia considers the successor as the esoteric interpreter of the revelation and the divine law. Twelvers believe that the descendants of the Islamic prophet Muhammad through his daughter Fatima and his son in law Ali are the best source of knowledge about the Quran and Islam, the most trusted carriers and protectors of Muhammad's Sunnah traditions and the most worthy of emulation. In particular, Twelvers as the main branch of Shia Islam, with 85% of all Shias recognize the succession of Ali, Muhammad's cousin, son-in-law, the male head of the Al-Al-Bayt or people of the Prophet's house, and the father of Muhammad's only bloodline, as opposed to that of the caliphate recognized by Sunni Muslims. Twelvers also believe that Ali should have been successor to Muhammad. Although Ali is widely accepted by Muslims in general to be the fourth successor to the caliphate after Uthman, for the Shia, however, he is the first divinely sanctioned imam or divinely appointed spiritual leader after Muhammad. The seminal event in Shia history is the martyrdom in 680 CE of Ali's son Husayn, who led an uprising against the then, illegitimate to them, caliph. For the Shia, Husayn came to symbolize resistance against tyranny. Regardless of the dispute about the caliphate, Twelvers recognize the religious authority of the Twelve Imams, also called Khalifa Alai. Ziyarat and Tawassal Ziyarat is a religious practice which means to attend before religious leaders or their graves in order to express and indicate reverence, love and acquire spiritual blessings. Tawassal is an Arabic word originated from wasala wasalat Arabic. Whistle whistle. The wasila is a means by which a person, goal or objective is approached, attained or achieved, by Shia, to take advantage of factors to attain the goals is natural but these factors should not be taken as independent from God and should have been established in the Quran and Hadith. This means can be anything which causes drawing proximity to God such as prayer, alms giving. Isma. In Shia theology isma means impeccability, immunity to sin, and infallibility. Quote. When isma is attributed to human beings, the concept means the ability of avoiding acts of disobedience, in spite of having the power to commit them. As in prophets and imams, isma is a divine grace realized by God's preservation of the infallible, first by endowing them with pure constitution then, following in order, by blessing them with great excellences, giving them firm will against opponents, sending tranquility down upon them as sakina, and preserving their hearts and minds from sin. According to the theology of Twelvers, the successor of Muhammad is an infallible human individual who not only rules over the community with justice, but also is able to keep and interpret the sharia and its esoteric meaning. The words and deeds of Muhammad and the Imams are a guide and model for the community to follow, therefore, they must be free from error and sin, and must be chosen by divine decree, or nas, through Muhammad. According to Twelver Shia the Islamic prophet Muhammad, his daughter Fatima Zahra, and the Twelve Imams are considered to be infallible under the theological concept of Isma. Accordingly, they have the power to commit sin but are able to avoid doing so by their nature the infallibles are believed to follow only God's desire in their actions, because of their supreme righteousness, consciousness, and love for God. They are also regarded as being immune to error, in practical matters, in calling people to religion, and in the perception of divine knowledge. Shias believe that the fourteen infallibles are superior to the rest of creation, as well as to the other major prophets. From historical viewpoint, Wilford Madeling claims that the purification of all al bayt the family of Muhammad is guaranteed by the verse of purification in the Quran. Donaldson, in his argument, believed that the development of the Shiite theology in the period between the death of Muhammad and the disappearance of the twelfth Imam originates the concept of isma, which adds to its importance. Anne Lambton claims that neither the term nor the concept of isma is in the Quran or in canonical Sunni hadith. It was apparently first used by the Imamiyya, perhaps during the beginning of the second century of the Islamic calendar in which they maintained that the Imam must be immune from sin According to Hamid Algar, the concept isma is encountered as early as the first half of the second century of the Islamic calendar. The Shia scholars of the 4th and the 5th centuries of the Islamic calendar defined the infallibility of Muhammad and the Twelve Imams in an increasingly stringent form until the doctrine came to exclude their commission of any sin or inadvertent error, either before or after they assumed office. The occultation 
According to Twelvers, the conditions under the Abbasids caused Hassan al Askari to hide the birth of his son, al Mahdi. The occultation is a controversial concept. Shia sects like the Zaydi and Nazari Ismaili do not believe in the idea of the occultation. The Day of Resurrection By Shia theological doctrine, since the people have come from God, they will go back to God, and it is related to people's reaction to the prophecy. They argue that according to the Quran, 23-115, God, whose actions are the absolute truth, does not create a man without any purpose while the quality of this world makes the recompense impossible, the justice of God necessitates that every one be recompensed according to his own actions. Tabatabai describes the death as a transfer from one stage of life to another eternal stage. The verse 2147 points to the precision of the scales of justice by which the deeds and intentions of people are weighed. Topic. The return Raja. Twelvers believe in the return, the term refers to the revival of a group of Muslims back to this world after the appearance of Mahdi. The base of this belief derives from the revival of the dead in the past communities as mentioned in the Quran and the revival at the day of resurrection. Savani describes that resurrection is both of body and spirit. Quran 1751, in response to those that ask, Who will restore us? Answers. He who brought you forth the first time. Quote. In another place, verse 22 to 5-6, it is like the revival of the earth in the season of the spring after the winter. He adds the verse 36 to 79 implies that the person who is raised up at the resurrection is the one who was alive on the earth. The purpose of the resurrection of the body and rejoining the soul is that it experience the rewards and punishments which are sensible and they cannot be experienced with the lack of the body. The purpose of spiritual resurrection is to observe those rewards and punishments which are especial to the spirit. Topic: The day of judgment. God will resurrect all human beings and they will stand before God to be questioned about their lives on the world. On this day people are two groups, people who receive their book by their right hand who are the people of paradise and their face is bright and the people who receive their book by their left hand who are the people of hell and their face is dark. As the verse 41-21 points out, on the day of judgment, the ears, eyes and skin of disbelievers will testify against them saying, Allah has caused us to speak, he causes all things to speak. Topic. Intercession Belief to the intercession derives from the Quran, 21-28, 10-3, 53-26 and Sunnah. Muhammad, the angels 53-26, Imams and martyrs are among the intercessors by God's will. Muhammad has expressed that one of God's gifts to him is the right of intercession of those who have committed major sins. As Quran represents the sons of Jacob asked their father to intercede for them and their father promised to them that he will do it at the promised time. Topic. Sharia Faru al -din. According to Nasser, the root of the Sharia is shr, which means road that all the men and women should follow. The Sharia or divine law of Islam is ritual, legal, ethical, and social aspects of Islam which is the concrete embodiment of the will of God. It governs the life of a Muslim from the cradle to the grave in order to get happiness in the hereafter. He adds to get into Hakika, a Muslim should follow the Sharia which resides within the formal law. This interior part of the Sharia is Tariqah. The Sharia constitutes of abadit worship, which is all the conjunctions that apply to the Islamic rites and mu'amalat which includes every kind of social, political and economic transactions. The Sharia divides all acts into five categories, obligatory wajib, recommended mandub, reprehensible or abominable makra, forbidden haram, and acts toward which the divine law is indifferent muba. The evaluation of the act is on the base of the Sharia. God is the ultimate legislator the shari, and the roots of the sharia is in the Quran. The hadith and sunnah are the second sources of the sharia and the complements of the Quran. The sharia has immutable principles but is applicable to new situations. Salat prayer meaning connection. Establish the five daily prayers, called namaz in Persian and Urdu. Psalm fasting, fasting during the holy month of Ramadan, called ruza in Persian. Zakat poor rate charity. Zakat means to purify. Kums 
fifth of one's savings tax. Hajj pilgrimage, performing the pilgrimage to Mecca. Jihad struggle, struggling to please God. The greater, internal jihad is the struggle against the evil within one's soul in every aspect of life, called jihad akbar. The lesser, or external, jihad is the struggle against the evil of one's environment in every aspect of life, called jihad ashgar. This is not to be mistaken with the common modern misconception that this means, holy war. Writing the truth, jihad bill column, struggle of the pen, and speaking truth in front of an oppressor are also forms of jihad. Commanding what is just. Forbidding what is evil. Tawala, loving the al al bayt and their followers. Tabara, dissociating oneself from the enemies of the Alu el Bayt. Topic: <laughs> Shahada, declaration of faith. While sharing the unity of God and the divine guidance through his messenger Muhammad, Shia maintained that for the spiritual and moral guidance of the community, God instructed Muhammad to designate Ali as the leader of the community which was made public at Ghadir Qum. Twelvers, along with Sunnis, agree that a single honest recitation of the Shahada in Arabic is all that is required for a person to become a Muslim according to most traditional schools. A vast majority of Twelvers often add Ali and Waliyu el la Li wali al Ali is the vicegerent of God at the end of the Shahada. This testifies that Ali is also the leader of the believers along with God and Muhammad, proof of which Shia theologians find in the Quran, Quran 555, though this form of the Shahada is recited daily by other Shisha sects such as the Nazari Ismailis and Tayyabi. Twelvers view it as mustahab recommended, but not wajib obligatory. Topic. Prayer. The canonical prayers are the most central rite of Islam which is incumbent on all Muslims, both male and female, from the age of adolescence until death. The prayers must be performed in the direction of the Kaaba in Mecca five times a day, in the early morning, between dawn and sunrise, at noon, in the afternoon, at sunset, and at night before midnight. The call to prayer and ritual ablution are preceded before the prayer and it can be performed on any ritually clean ground whether outdoors or indoors as long as one has the permission of the owner. The units of prayer are two in the morning, four at noon, four in the afternoon, three in the evening, and four at night. Shia perform prayers on special occasions like fear, joy, thanksgiving and at the pilgrimages and at the end of Ramadan. There are minor differences between Sunnis and Twelver Shisha in how the prayer ritual is performed. During the purification ritual in preparation for prayer which consists of washing the face, arms, feet, etc. and saying of some prayers, the Shisha view wiping the feet with wet hands is sufficient. Also, Shisha do not use their fingers to clean inside the ears during the ablution ritual. A prerequisite for purification is that one has to be clean before performing the purification ritual. During prayer, it is the Yafari view that it is preferable to prostrate on earth, leaves that are not edible or wood, as these three things are considered purest by Muhammad in hadith specifically mentioning tayammum. Hence many shisha use a turba, a small tablet of soil, often taken from the ground of a holy site, or wood during their daily prayers upon which they prostrate. In the Yafari view, the hands are to be left hanging straight down the side during the standing position of the prayer. The Yafari consider the five daily prayers to be compulsory, though the Yafari consider it acceptable to pray the second and third prayer, and the fourth and fifth prayer, one after the other during the parts of the day where they believe the timings for these prayers to overlap. Topic. Fasting Nasser describes that fasting is abstaining oneself from food, drink and sexual intercourse from the dawn to the sunset during the month of Ramadan. The fast also requires the abstaining one's mind and tongue away from evil thoughts and words. It is obligatory from the age of adolescence until the time one possesses the physical strength to undertake it. The fast is not obligatory for the sick, those traveling and breastfeeding mothers, but they must make up the lost days when possible. According to Tabatabai, Arabic, al fasting means to abstain oneself from something, which later in the development of the religion was applied to abstaining from some particular things, from break of dawn up to sunset, with intention Fasting results in piety i.e., to abstain oneself from gratifying worldly matters, results in the perfection of the spirit. He adds, one should care about matters which take him away from his Lord, this is called piety. 
This abstinence from common lawful things causes him to abstain from unlawful things and to come nearer to God. The end of Ramadan comes with the prayer of the Eid after which a sum of money equal to the cost of all the meals not eaten by oneself and one's family during this month is usually given to the poor. Qums and zakah The term zakah is related to the purity in Arabic. It is the annual taxation of one's excess wealth at certain rates for different valuables. It is a form of social welfare program, by which wealth is redistributed and the accumulation of wealth in the hands of a small elite prevented. It is also seen as a ritual purification of one's wealth. Kums, kames meaning one fifth, is an annual tax of one fifth which is levied on net income after paying all expenses. This tax is to be spent on Muhammad, his family, orphans, the needy, and the travelers. Half of the kums is the share of the imam which is his inheritance from Muhammad and at the absence of imam, it is paid to marja as the representative of imam. The items which are eligible for kums are seven. The profit or the surplus of the income. The legitimate wealth which is mixed with some illegitimate wealth. Mines and minerals. The precious stones obtained from sea by diving. Treasures. The land which a dhimmi kafir buys from a Muslim. The spoils of war, Coombs is mandatory on seven assets, earned profits, net income after paying all expenses. Zakat or alms is levied on crops, livestock, gold, silver and cash. In Islamic legal terminology, it means, "...one fifth of certain items which a person acquires as wealth, and which must be paid as an Islamic tax." According to Shia, the items eligible for Coombs are referred to as ghanima al in the Quran. The Arabic word ghanima has two meanings. Spoils of war. Or. War booty. Gain or profit the Sunni translate this word exclusively as. War booty. Or. Spoils of war. The Twelvers hold the view that the word ghanima has two meanings as mentioned above. The second meaning is illustrated by the common use of the Islamic banking term al ghanim bil ghurm meaning. Gains accompany liability for loss or risk. Also, in a famous supplication, the supplication after the noon prayer, the person asks God to bestow on him his favors, one of those favors which the person asks is the benefit or gain from every act of righteousness. The word used here is al-ghanima walganamata min kuli bir this is in accordance with the second meaning of the word. Hajj Hajj is the supreme pilgrimage of the Muslim to the Kaaba in Mecca. This rite involves circumambulation around the Kaaba, certain movements, prayers, and the sacrifice of an animal in Mecca and adjoining holy areas according to Sunnah. Muslims believe that if the Hajj was performed by sincerity, their sins will be forgiven by God. It is performed in the month of Dhul Hijjah and is obligatory for all the Muslims who possess physical and financial ability. There is also lesser Hajj or Hajj al Umrah, which is performed on the remaining of the year. Topic. Jihad According to Nasser, jihad literally means effort but in the path of God in the whole of life. Shia associates the doctrine of jihad directly to the wilaya or allegiance to the imama, i.e., it is imam who can distinguish the situation which necessitates the jihad and just this kind of jihad may cause the entry to the paradise. Nasser states that as equilibrium, both outward and inward, is the prerequisite for the spiritual flight, all Muslims should carry out jihad against any outward and inward forces to maintain equilibrium. The outward jihad is related to the defense of the Muslim world against non-Islamic forces. It also includes the defense of one's honor, family and rights and establishing justice in the whole environment. But this lesser jihad should be completed by a greater jihad which is war against all forces that are against the nobility of the human. He adds that from the spiritual point of view all the pillars of Islam like shahada, prayer, are the weapons for the practice of this inner jihad. So inner jihad is the path for the realization of the one who is the ultimate message of the Islam. This inner jihad continues until every breath of man echoes that reality who is the origin of everything and all things return to him. Nasser adds that every religious deed is jihad because it is a striving between one's passionate soul nafs and the demands of the immortal spirit. Islam sees jihad as a care against everything which distracts one from God. Shia believe that jihad as defense is legitimate not as aggression. 
The jihad cannot be done against the innocent and the enemy should be treated with justice and kindness and jihad should be carried out on the basis of truth not on the basis of anger. The killing of women, children, even animals and the destruction is forbidden in jihad. Tawala and Tabara Love of Muhammad is incumbent upon all Muslims and is the key for the love of God. To love God needs that God love the one and God does not love the one who does not love his messengers. Topic. Commanding what is just and forbidding what is evil In addition to leading a virtuous life, a Muslim should enjoin all other Muslims to do the same and to avoid all vices prohibited. Topic. Differences Topic. Dissimulation Takiyya. By Shia, acting according to religion is incumbent on every one, but if the expression of a belief endanger one's life, honor and property, he can conceal his belief as the verse 16-106 implies. It is as a weapon for the weak before the tyrants. If dissimulation cause the disappearance of the religion or the fundamentals of the religion, it is forbidden and Muslims are to give up their lives but if there is no advantage in their being killed, it is to dissimulate. There is no place for dissimulation regarding the teaching of the doctrines of the religion. As Shia has been a minority under the rule of regimes who were in hostility to their beliefs, they choose to be cautious to prevent their extinction. Henry Corbin, states that the practice was instituted by the Imams themselves, not only for reasons of personal safety, but as an attitude called for by the absolute respect for high doctrines. Nobody has strictly the right to listen to them except those who are capable of listening to, and comprehending, the truth. Quote. <laughs> Mutah, temporary marriage Nika al Mutah, Nika el Mutah Arabic, Enka alm also Nika Mutah literally, marriage of pleasure, or Saya, is a fixed time marriage which, according to the Usuli Shia schools of Sharia Islamic law, is a marriage with a preset duration, after which the marriage is automatically dissolved. It has many conditions that can be considered as prerequisite, similar to that of permanent marriage. It is the second form of Islamic marriage. Nika. However, it is regarded as haram prohibited by Sunnis. This is a highly controversial fiqh topic. Sunnis and Shia hold diametrically opposed views on its permissibility. However, some Sunni Muslims recognize Nika Misair. Mutah existed during the time of Muhammad, and during a portion of his time it was not prohibited. On this principle, Shias believe that anything that was allowed during the time of Muhammad should remain allowed after. Mutah was practiced from the time of revelation to Muhammad until the time of Umar as the verse 70-29 points to it. Jurisprudence <inaudible> 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 According to Jafari jurisprudence, Sharia is derived from the Quran and the Sunnah. The difference between Sunni and Shisha Sharia results from a Shish a belief that Muhammad assigned Ali to be the first ruler and the leader after him the Khalifa or steward. This difference resulted in the Shisha following hadith from Muhammad and his descendants the twelve Imams. Some of them are not accepting the examples. Verdicts, and a hadith of Abu Bakr, Umar and Uthman ibn Affan who are considered by Sunnis to be the first three caliphs. Attributing the concept of the masum, infallibility, to the twelve imams or the fourteen infallibles including Muhammad and his daughter Fatima and accepting the examples and verdicts of this special group. Topic. Akbari and Usuli schools Rejecting the function of the Muaytahid, comparing to the authority of Imam, Mullah Muhammad Amin al astarabadi d. 1626-27 knew the Muaytahid unnecessary as the people themselves following the instructions of the Imam which is sufficient for the guidance of the Shia. Akbaris only rely on the hadith of the Prophet and the Imams. Knowing them as non-systematic and purely doctrinal without tolerating the rational judgment, Usulis depicted themselves as a living continuous leadership of the believers with flexibility regarding legal and especially political questions. 
Usuli implies the doctrine of usul which means the principle of the jurisprudence, and Ilm al-usul concerns with establishing the legal standards on the basis of Quran, Hadith, Ijma and Aql. Ijma is the unanimous consensus. Aql, in Shia jurisprudence, is applied to four practical principles namely bara'at immunity, idiyah precaution, takir selection, and istishab continuity in the previous state which are applied when other religious proofs are not applicable. Topic. The sources of jurisprudence According to Shia, the Quran, the Sunnah, intellect and consensus are the basis of the jurisprudence. As Islam is considered by Shia to be the last and the most perfect religion, by Ithihad, it deduces the responses through Islamic sources. Thus Ithihad brings flexibility to Islamic system. Topic. Guardianship of the jurisprudent By Shia political thought, at the absence of an infallible imam, a capable jurist takes the responsibility of leadership of the community. By Shia jurisprudence, the basis of the juristic authority is derived from the imamate as the expansion of the prophecy and knowledge which is also the basis for the religious and political authority of the imam. As Islam is the foundation of Muslims' culture, it needs government in order to be implemented, and establishing an Islamic society is the aim of the Islamic government. The Islamic authority responds to social needs by Islamic norms. God's absolute authority is the foundation of Twelvers' political thought, though everyone who wishes to have authority must be assigned by him. In referring to the Hakim Wali Jafar as Sadiq states that, I have appointed him a Hakim over you. If such a person orders judges according to our ruling and the person concerned does not accept it, then he has shown contempt for the ruling of God and rejects us, and he who rejects us, actually rejects Allah and such a person is close to association shirk with Allah. Regarding the priority of the guardianship over all other religious law, Khomeini states that, the government, or the absolute guardianship that is delegated to the noblest messenger of Allah, is the most important divine law and has priority over all other ordinances of the law. If the powers of the government be restricted to the framework of ordinances of the law then the delegation of the authority to Muhammad would be a senseless phenomenon. Sheikh al-Saduq and Sheikh al-Tusi transmit the hadith that Muhammad al-Mahdi, in response to Ishaq ibn Yaqub, through Muhammad ibn Uthman al-Umari expresses that, "...as for the events that may occur al al when you may need guidance refer to the transmitters of our teachings who are my huja proof to you and I am the proof of God to you all." Quote, Ja'afar al-Sadiq, pointing to verse 4-60, forbids referring to tyrannical government for all the times. Quote, In fact, the idea of jurist authority is based on the belief that establishing an ideal society without any aid from God's revelation, is not possible. According to Twelvers, juristic authority emphasizes on the role of sharia in society. According to al murtaza on certain conditions holding office on behalf of the true leaders is obligatory, to enable the office to order what is right and forbid what is wrong, to protect the Shiites, the Shiites are threatened to death, otherwise. Traditionally Twelver Shia Muslims consider Ali ibn Abi Talib and the subsequent further eleven Imams not only religious guides but political leaders, based on a crucial hadith where Muhammad passes on his power to command Muslims to Ali. Since the last Imam, Muhammad al-Mahdi, went into occultation in 939 and is not expected back until end times, this left Shia without religiously sanctioned governance. The first Shia regime, the Safavid dynasty in Iran, propagated the Twelver faith, made Twelver's law the law of the land, and patronized Twelver scholarship. For this, Twelver ulema crafted a new theory of government, which held that while not truly legitimate, the Safavid monarchy would be blessed as the most desirable form of government during the period of awaiting. For Muhammad al-Mahdi, the twelfth Imam, in general, the Shia adhere to one of three approaches towards the state, either full participation in government, i.e., attempting to influence policies by becoming active in politics, or passive cooperation with it, i.e. minimal participation, or else most commonly, mere toleration of it, i.e. remaining aloof from it. This changed with Iranian Revolution where the Twelver Ayatollah Khomeini and his supporters established a new theory of governance for the Islamic Republic of Iran. 
It is based on Khomeini's theory of guardianship of the Islamic jurist as rule of the Islamic jurist, and jurists as legatees of Muhammad. While not all Twelver Shia accept this theory, it is uniquely Twelver and the basis of the constitution of Iran, the largest Shia Muslim country, where the supreme leader must be an Islamic jurist. <laughs> Ithihad and Taklid accepting a scholar's verdict. How to associate with a religious and judicial problem that its answer is not in the Quran and Hadith. Regarding Ithihad, Halm explains that while the religious material are limited, what procedure should be taken if a problem arises? Here human reason comes in, God gave reason to human to discover his will. If no answer was given by tradition the intellect should come in. This rational effort to find the solutions for the temporary issues is called Ithihad making of an effort. It is derived from the word jihad which means the struggle for the attainment of God's will on earth. The participle of Ithihad is Moitahid, the person who makes effort. They should master the Arabic language and be familiar with the foundations of Quran and Hadith. They also should know the principles of jurisprudence and logic. The remaining other believers, who are not expert, exercise taklid which means authorization, that is common believers authorize the experts to make decisions for them. If the Moitahid make a mistake, the believer is not responsible for his error. Though Ithihad makes the Shia theology flexible. The traces of Ithihad refers back to the time of Imams when they trained scholars to answer to the judicial problems of the people. As al-Bakir said to Aban ibn Taglib, Sit down at the door of the mosque and pronounce fatwa judgment to the people. According to Nasser, the Muaytahids acted as the guard against tyrannical government and they had religious and social functions. Al Karaki narrates a hadith from his teachers that the scholar is the guardian of the religion, successor of the Imam, and he should draw conclusions from the sources by the reasoning. History Imamate era Twelver Imams amongst Shia Emergence In 610, when Muhammad received the first revelation, Ali was ten years old. At the time of Muhammad, some of the supporters of Ali, particularly Meqdad ibn al-Azwad, Salman the Persian, Abu Dar al-Gifari, and Umar ibn Yasir were called the Shiites of Ali. The division of Islam into Shia and Sunni traces back to the crisis of the succession to Muhammad. The followers of Ali fight with some of the Quraysh and some of the companions of Muhammad like Tala and Zubair. As most of his supporters were in Iraq, Ali moved the capital of Islam to Kufa and there began to fight against Muawiyah who had rejected to give allegiance to Ali. The death of Husayn played an important role in the spread of Shiism in the regions of Iraq, Yemen and Persia. At the end of the first century, the influential leaders in the government established the city of Qam for the settlement of the Shia. Topic. Formulation. Al-Bakir was teacher of law for 20 years and a reporter of Hadith. He also introduced the principle of Takiyah. Al-Bakir narrated many a Hadith about jurisprudence and other religious sciences which based the foundations for the Shia instructions. With change in political situations and a suitable conditions for the development of religious activities and the time of elaborating the religious sciences, Jafar al-Sadiq had an important role in forming the Shia jurisprudence. Jafar al-Sadiq and al-Bakir are the founders of the Imami Shiite school of religious law. Al-Sadiq acquired a noteworthy group of scholars around himself, comprising some of the most eminent jurists, traditionists, and theologians of the time. During his time, Shia developed in the theological and legal issues. Both Muhammad al-Bakir and Jafar al-Sadiq improved the position of the Shia and elaborated the intellectual basis of the interpretation and practice of Shiite Islam. Their teachings were the basis for the development of Shiite spirituality and religious rituals. Topic. Organizing At the beginning of the 3rd, 9th century once again Shia flourished and it was due to the translation of scientific and philosophical books from other languages to Arabic, al maimon giving freedom to the propagation of different religious views and his interest in intellectual debates. 
Under the rule of al maimun Shia was free from the political pressures and was somehow at liberty. In the 4th 10th century, the weaknesses in the Abbasid government and coming up the Bayid rulers caused the spread, strength, and open propagation of the Shiism. From the 5th, 11th to the 9th century, many Shia kings appeared in the Islamic world who propagated the Shiism. Topic: <coughs> <coughs> Crisis and consolidation. Topic: <coughs> <coughs> Baghdad school. During 10th century and Bayad era, Baghdad was the center of Mu'tazila theologians. Their ideas about attribute and justice of God and human free will affected Shia theologians. Bani Nabakht, particularly Abu Sal al Nabakhti, d. 923 fussed Mu'tazili theology with Imami system of thought. On the other hand, Imami traditionists of Qam, particularly Ibn Babawe, d. 991, react to their theological ideas based on twelve Imams' hadiths. He tried to defend Imami ideas against Mutazili criticism regarding anthropomorphism. Tashbi. The three prominent figures of Baghdad school were Al Sheikh Al Mufid, d. 1022 CE, Sharif Al Murtaza, d. 1044, and Sheikh Al Tusi, d. 1067. Al Mufid was a Twelver theologian, Mahadith, and Fiqi who has used Bani Nabat as well as Baghdadi Mu'tazila ideas to form his theology while trying to adapt theological ideas with Twelve Imams Hadith. While the Mu'tazila was dominant in Baghdad, he tries to distinguish Shia and Mu'tazila ideas and assert reason needs. Revelation, Sheikh Tusi, founder of Shia Ithihad, was the first to establish the basis of reasoning in Shia jurisprudence. His book Al Mabsit is the first book of Ithihad which derives the subordinates from the principles. Tusi bought the Shia religious law to a new period. The main point is that he recognized the needs of the community and preserved the principles. By his debates and books, Al Mufid, Sayyid al Murtada, and Sheikh al Tusi in Iraq were the first to introduce the usul of the jurisprudence under the influence of the Shafi'i and Mutazili doctrines. Al Kulaini and al Saduq, in Qam and Ray, were concerned with traditionalist approach. Twelver Imams, amongst other Shia Imam, with their early Imams are shown in the chart below. This also indicates Twelvers amongst various other sects in the present world. Topic. Jurisprudential and theological development Topic. School of Hilla The beginner of this school, Ibn Idris al-Hili with his rationalistic tendency, detailed Shiite jurisprudence in his al sarir Ibn Idris, with rejecting the validity of the isolate hadith, states rational faculty AQL as the fourth source of law in deducing legal norms before Quran and hadith. But real usuli doctrinal movement began by al mahakik al-Hili who brought up Ithihad and Qiyas analogy to jurisprudence. Ithihad brought dynamism into Shia law. Mahakik Hili and al-Hili gave a definite shape to Shia jurisprudence and they separated the weak hadith from the sound. According to John Cooper, after Al Hili, Imami theology and legal methodology became thoroughly infused with the terminology and style of philosophy. In 1256, the Abbasid dynasty collapsed with the invasion of Mongols to Baghdad. Under the ruling of Mongols, Shia were more free to develop, and Al Hila became the new learning center for Shia. Continuing the rationalistic tradition of the Baghdad school, defining reason as an important principle of jurisprudence, al hilla school laid the theoretical foundation upon which the authority of jurisprudence is based today. The second wave of the Usulis was shaped in the Mongol period when al hilli used the term Moitahid, the one who deduces the ordinance on the basis of the authentic arguments of the religion. By Ithihad, al hilli meant the disciplined reasoning on the basis of the Sharia. By developing the principles of the usul, he introduced more legal and logical norms which extended the meaning of the usul beyond the four principal sources of sharia. Topic. School of Jabal Emil. Emili was the first who fully formulated the principles of the Ithihad. Topic. Rising to power Topic. School of Isfahan In 1501 Ismail I took the power in Iran and set up the Safavid dynasty. While most of the larger cities of Iran were Sunni, he declared Twelver Shiism as the official religion of his empire. 
Many Shia scholars were brought to set up the Shia seminaries in Iran. One of those was Karaki who stated that, for the interest of Ummah, it is necessary for a Shia scholar to be a legitimate leader to carry out the tasks of the Imam who is hidden. Under Safavids, religious authorities Sheikh al -Islam were appointed for all major cities. Karaki established a great seminary Haza in Kazvin and Isfahan, consequently, Iran once again became center of imami jurisprudence. Surawardi tried to harmonize rational philosophy and intellectual intuition, but Mir Damad is the founder of it. Mir Damad combined the teachings of Ibn Arabi, Surawardi, Ibn Sina and Nair al-Din and founded a new intellectual dimension in the texture of Shi'ism. The scholars of the school of Isfahan integrated the philosophical, theological, and mystical traditions of Shi'ism into a metaphysical synthesis known as divine wisdom or theosophy Persian, hikmat the most important representative of the school of Isfahan was Mullah Sadra. Mullah Sadra produced his own synthesis of Muslim thought, including theology, peripatetic philosophy, philosophical mysticism, and Sufi studies, particularly the Sufism of Ibn al-Arabi. Mullah Sadra trained eminent students, such as Mullah Musan Kashani and Abd al-Razak Lahiji who passed down the traditions of the school of Isfahan in later centuries in both Iran and India. Topic. Iqbari Usuli controversies By the end of the Safavid era 1736, the Usuli school suffered by the Akbari traditionalist trend which Mullah Muhammad Amin al-Astarabadi was its founder. Astarabadi attacked the idea of Ithihad and called the Usulis as the enemies of religion. He recognized the Hadith as the only source for the Islamic law and the understanding of the Quran. Bibahani, as the founder of a new stage in Shia jurisprudence, took a new practical method. He attacked the Iqbaris and their method was abandoned by Shia. The dominance of the Usuli over the Akbari came in last half of the 18th century when Muhammad Bakir Bibahani led Usulis to dominance and completely routed the Akbaris at Karbala and Najaf. So that only a handful of Shi'a ulama have remained Akbari to the present day. The re establishment of the Usuli school led to the enhancement of the authority of the legal scholars in the Qajar dynasty. Qam <laughs> school, Islamic Revolution, and Islamic Republic During the 1960s, Khomeini called for the abolition of the monarchy in Iran. He was sent into exile in Iraq, where he continued his opposition to the Iranian regime. He further ordered the opposition to the Shah, King and led the 1979 revolution of Iran. Calendar Twelver Shia, celebrate the following annual holidays Eid ul-Fitr, Id al-Fitr which marks the end of fasting during the month of Ramadan and falls on the first day of Shawwal. Eid al-Adha, which marks the end of the Hajj or pilgrimage to Mecca, starts on the tenth day of Du al-Hijjah. The following holidays are observed by Twelvers Shias, unless otherwise noted. The morning of Muharram or remembrance of Muharram and Ashura Ashra for Shia commemorates Imam Hussein ibn Ali's martyrdom in the Battle of Karbala. Imam Hussein was grandson of Muhammad, who was killed by Yazid ibn Muawiyah, the second caliph of the Umayyad Caliphate and the first one by heredity. One group of Sunni scholars have deemed Yazid to be a kafir e.g. Sunni scholar Ibn Jawzi in Wafa al-Wafa. Sunnis also commemorates Imam Hussein ibn Ali's martyrdom, but do not engage in the spectacle conducted by Shias. Arba'an Arabic word for 40 commemorates on 40th day of Imam Hussein's martyrdom 40th day is an auspicious day for any deceased as per Islam remembering the suffering of Imam Hussein and his household, the women and children. After Hussein was killed, they were marched over the desert, from Karbala central Iraq, to Sham Damascus, Syria. Many children some of whom were direct descendants of Muhammad died of thirst and exposure along the route. Arba'an occurs on the 20th of Safar, 40 days after Ashura. Malad al-Nabi, Muhammad's birth date, is celebrated by the Shia on the 17th of Rabi al-Awal, which coincides with the birth date of the sixth Imam, Jafar al-Sadiq. Mid Shaiban is the birth date of the twelfth and final Imam, Muhammad al Mahdi. It is celebrated by Twelvers on the 15th of Shaiban. Many Shia fast on this day to show gratitude. 
Eid al Ghadir celebrates Ghadir Qum, the occasion when Muhammad announced Ali's imamate before a multitude of Muslims. Eid al Ghadir is held on the 18th of Dhu al Hijjah. Al Mubahila celebrates a meeting between the Al Al Bayt household of Muhammad and a Christian deputation from Najran. Al Mubahila is held on the 24th of Dhu al Hijjah. Topic: Notable scholars. Topic: Historical. Topic: See also Topic Notes Topic Footnotes Topic Further reading The book Dur e Mansour Dar Halat e Ulama e Zanjapur The book Matla e Anwar by Maulana Mortaza Hussain Sadrul Afazal. The book, Khursheede -e Kawar, by Malin Saeed actor Gopalpuri. The thesis on, Life of Jawad ul Ulama, research work of Dr. Anayat Ali, Aligarh Muslim University. The booklet, Haknuma, published Jamia Amania, Banaras. References Black, Anthony. 2011. The History of Islamic Political Thought from the Prophet to the Present. Edinburgh, Edinburgh University Press. ISBN 978-0-7486-3987-8. Campo, Juan E. 2009. Encyclopedia of Islam. New York, Facts on File. ISBN 978-0-8160-5454-1. Chelkowski, Peter. 2009. Tazia. Encyclopedia Iranica. Retrieved 6 February 2015. Corbin, Henry. 1993. History of Islamic Philosophy, translated by Leodane Sherard, Philip Sherard. London, Keegan Paul International in association with Islamic Publications for the Institute of Ismaili Studies. ISBN 0-7103-0416-1. Cornell, Vincent J. 2007. Voices of Islam. Westport, Khan, Prager Publishers. ISBN 978-0-275-98732-9. Dabashi, Hamid. 1989. Authority in Islam, From the Rise of Muhammad to the Establishment of the Umayyads. New Brunswick, USA, Transaction Publishers. ISBN 978-0-88738-288-8. Daftari, Farhad A History of Shi'i Islam. ISBN 978-0-85773-524-9. Encyclopædia Britannica Online. Encyclopædia Britannica, Inc. Encyclopædia Iranica. Center for Iranian Studies, Columbia University. ISBN 1-56859-050-4. Encyclopædia of the Modern Middle East and North Africa. Gale Group, 2004. ISBN 978 0 2 1 Faruqi, Kamal Tawhid and the Doctrine of Isma. Islamic Studies, 4 1, 31–43. JSTOR 20832784. Registration required help. Halm, Heinz, translated from the German by Allison Shia Islam, From Religion to Revolution 2, Printing ed. Princeton, N.J., Marcus Wiener Publishers. ISBN 978-1-55876-134-6. Kremer, Joel L. 1992. Humanism in the Renaissance of Islam, The Cultural Revival During the Bayad Age. Brill. ISBN 978-90-04-09736-0. Lakani, M. Ali, Shah Kazemi, Reza, Lewison, Leonard. 2006. The Sacred Foundations of Justice in Islam: The Teachings of Ali ibn Abi Talib. World Wisdom Inc. ISBN 9781933316260. Lehman, Oliver. 2008. The Quran: An Encyclopedia. London: U. A. Routledge. 
ISBN 978-0-415-32639-1. Merchinkovsky, Christoph Shiite Identities, Community and Culture in Changing Social Contexts. Berlin, Lit Verlag 2010. ISBN 978-3-643-80049-7. Martin, Richard C. Encyclopedia of Islam and the Muslim World, Vol. 1. Macmillan. ISBN 978-0-02-865604-5. Martin, Richard C. 2003. Encyclopedia of Islam and the Muslim World Online AUSG, ed. New York, Macmillan Reference USA. ISBN 978-0-02-865603-8. Momin, Mujin An Introduction to Shi'i Islam, The History and Doctrines of Twelver Shi'ism. New Haven, Yale University Press. ISBN 978-0-300-03531-5. Motahari, Mortiza Fundamentals of Islamic Thought, God, Man, and the Universe. Mizan Press. OCLC 909092922. Murata, Sachiko, Chittik, William Vision of Islam, Reflecting on the Hadith of Gabriel New York, New York, Paragon House. ISBN 978-1-55778-516-9. Nasser, Hossein, Dabashi, Hamid, Nasser, Vali. Shi Ism Doctrines, Thought, and Spirituality. Albany, Sunni. ISBN 978 0 585 08860 0. Nasser, Saeed Hossein, Lehman, Oliver. History of Islamic Philosophy. London, Routledge. ISBN 978 0 415 25934 7. Nasser, Saeed Hossein 2002. The Heart of Islam Enduring Values for Humanity. Pimble, NSW, Perfect Bound. ISBN 0-06-051665-8. Nasser, Saeed Hossein 2006. Islamic Philosophy from Its Origin to the Present. Sunni Press. ISBN 978-0-7914-6799-2. Nasser, Saeed Hossein 2000. Ideals and Realities of Islam New Rev. Ed. Chicago, Illinois, ABC International Group. ISBN 978-1-930637-11-5. Nasser, Dabashi, Nasser Expectation of the Millennium Shi'ism in History. Albany, State University of New York Press. ISBN 978-0-585-07849-6. Nasser, Saeed Hossein 2007. Islam Religion, History, and Civilization. Pimble, NSW, HarperCollins eBooks. ISBN 978-0-06-155642-5. Nasser, Saeed Hossein 2008. Islamic Spirituality, Foundations. London, Routledge. ISBN 978-0-415-44262-6. Pakatchi, Ahmad Imamiya. The Great Islamic Encyclopedia. Center for the Great Islamic Encyclopedia. ISBN 978-964-7025-04-1. Rizvi, Saeed Muhammad Qums, An Islamic Tax. Ansarian. Rizvi, Saeed Muhammad Islam, Faith, Practice and History. Ansarian Publications. ISBN 978-964-438-620-6. Sashadina, Abdulaziz Abdulhussein The Just Ruler al -Sultan al -Adil in Shiite Islam, the Comprehensive Authority of the Jurist in Imamite Jurisprudence, Oxford University Press U.S. ISBN 978-0-19-511915-2. Savani, Jafar, Shah Kazemi, Reza the Doctrines of Shi'ism, A Compendium of Imami Beliefs and Practices. I. B. Tories. ISBN 978-1-86064-780-2. Tabatabai, Saeed Muhammad Hossein Shiite Islam. Hossein Nasser translator. Sunni Press. ISBN 0-87395-272-3. Asterisk Tabatabae, Saeed Muhammad Hossein, Al Mizan, An Exegesis of the Qur'an, 3. 
Wofis. Tabatabae, Saeed Muhammad Hossein 1983, Al-Mizan, An Exegesis of the Qur'an. 1. Wofis. OCLC 311256759. Tabatabae, Saeed Muhammad Hossein Al-Mizan, An Exegesis of the Qur'an. 2. Wofis. Tabatabae, Saeed Muhammad Hossein Al-Mizan, An Exegesis of the Qur'an. 6. Wofis. Vaazi, Ahmad Shia Political Thought. London, Islamic Centre of England. ISBN 978-1-904934-01-1. Weiss, Bernard G. The Spirit of Islamic Law. University of Georgia Press. ISBN 978-0-8203-2827-0. External links Biggest Twelver Video Library A Brief Introduction of Twelve Imams A Brief History of the Lives of the Twelve Imams A Chapter of Shia Islam book by Muhammad Hussein Tabatabai 706 The Twelve Imams Taken From a Shiite Anthology", by Muhammad Hussein Tabatabai A Short History of the Lives of the Twelve Imams Ithna Ashariya An article by Encyclopedia Britannica Online Al-Islam. Org, Alul Bait Digital Islamic Library Project Twelver Media Source